Welcome back to Show Up 365 with Eli Machen. I've been fascinated over the years of how communication with couples kind of goes so awry when they're so passionate or intense about wanting to be heard or wanting someone to hear them and not really understanding why the harder they work at it, the worse it gets. And so what I'd like to talk about today is the struggle that couples go through or parents and children or teachers or employers who are trying to communicate so, and they get they get tense, the air around gets anxious, and all communication goes down the tubes. It just does not happen. You may be saying words, you may be saying lots of words, and yet the other person is not hearing you. And there's good reason for that, and I'd like to cover it today, if at all possible. Now, George Bernard Shaw said this, and I think that's really a powerful statement. He said, the biggest problem with communication is the illusion that it is taking place. I've seen that over and over and over over the years. It's like a real big struggle as to what's going on. Now, I've got a diagram up here that I want to show you uh, of a number of circles. Now, in the largest circle is what we think. It's what I think. It's what's going on in my head oftentimes. Now, that's good. There's a lot that goes on up there. And then, however, there's only about 30% of that, that a, third, a third of that, I cannot put into words. It's just up there. And I can't articulate. I can't even put any words in my own head. I'm just thinking stuff. Now, I can't put that into words, so I've got a third, a 33% drop in from what I'm thinking and what I put into words. Now, I've even got a bigger problem because half of what I can put in words, I only say to people. In other words, half of what's in my head that I can put to words is what I actually really share with others. Now, here's the rub. Only 8% of that original thought is what people actually understand. Now, that's the why so many people talk on and on and on and try to get something through or think that they're getting intense or loud or, or angry and you're going to hear me and they don't hear because the brain is shutting down. Now, this diagram that I'm showing you right here is on a healthy level of communication. This is sometimes almost about as good as you can get at the first level. Now, we can talk about how to get that deeper later in other conversations, other videos. But for today, I want you to understand why there's such a breakdown. Now, you think that when couples sit there and they get so intense with each other that they think they're being hurt because they're angry, they're upset, that they've been hurt, or whatever it is, and they're communicating to their spouse or partner or girlfriend or boyfriend or, or partner in their life, and they're not getting through they may be saying a lot of words. They may be getting real intense. They may be loud enough to be heard. But the problem is, the part of the brain that really needs to hear it is not hearing it any longer. Now, it's that small part of the brain, that lower mammalian and reptilian part of the brain, that's now kicked in. It's moved so fast now because it's in panic that it is outracing the smart part of the brain. And it's about the size or it's about the age of a six-year-old. Now, that's a real rub when you're trying to talk, because now you've got two couples, like we showed you just a minute ago, that sit there, and they're going at it, and it's like two six-year-old children trying to communicate, talk, and express feelings, and be emotionally mature. It doesn't work. It's just not going to happen. Now, you, what you're doing is you're working with that small part of the brain here that's the amygdala. That's, that's the piece I want you to focus on right now in this video, is that that's what you're up against, is that amygdala, and it's very fast. But there are some things about that that once it's kicked in and it's hijacked the brain, it ain't pretty. Not in your relationship, not in your communication and so forth. So I want you to kind of look at this in just a second here. When that part of the brain is triggered, and I've got both of them here, the mammalian and the reptilian brain are triggered, it operates, it processes, it acts like a precocious six-year-old or younger. 90% of all data that comes in goes straight to that area and is processed as visual information. In other words, we've learned, that part of the brain learned to determine whether it's safe or not. It learned all, how to receive and process data when we were pre-verbal, before we could articulate, where we had the language to go of what we saw. The brain was figuring out, are we safe or are we not? So today, even today, this part of the brain is processing 90% of all data through what we see, not what we hear. Now, and then, Here's one, this is a real kicker here. There are five times more connections going to the smart part from the not very smart part 
then for every one connection going back from the smart part of the brain to the very stupid part of the brain. And so the smart part is really outnumbered in its attempt to manage the smaller, the lower mammalian and reptilian brain. Now, you think your communication and your words are our struggle? And this is what you're up against. Now, this part of the brain is very self-centered. It's fear-oriented. It's totally selfish. It has no perspective. It doesn't work things in context. So when this part of the brain is cranking, whatever it is that you're talking about, whatever it is that you're trying to communicate, this part of the brain is not putting that in any kind of context of why you're saying what you're saying. Then this part also processes a lot of information, yet really has no information. This part of the brain actually makes up about 70,000 decisions a day for you. 98% of your decisions on a regular basis are made from this part of the brain. Now, the key to this whole process of communicating is safety. If you can maintain safety in a relationship, safety with your children, safety with your spouse or partner, safety with your employees, in the sense of are they being taken, are they safe in what they're about to hear? Because if they are, if they perceive that there's a sense of safety, even if they've been wrong, even if there's something you need to talk about this 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 difficult or struggling or it's just tough, if safety's involved, they're more than likely going to hear you. Now, here's some of the suggestions I have for you in creating safety in your relationship. Let me just pop some of these off, and then we're going to close with that. I want you to make a list of actions, words, or settings that, for you, feel unsafe. doesn't matter what the other one is, what you feel is unsafe. And then when deciding to have a conversation with someone, request that the situation comply with your needs for safety. In other words, if your spouse or partner wants to have a communication or talk, this is okay. This is what I need. I'm willing to sit down with you if you will work with me on in this area so I'm safe because I want to hear you. But I can't hear you if I'm panicked or I'm anxiety is high. Then maintain your boundaries or leave the conversation if they're not they're not honored. You, you're not going to hear anyway. So it's might as well if the other person is shut down, then stop. Don't keep talking. It's not going to go anywhere. Then ask yourself this. Can you listen without judgment? Is the person that you're talking to going to listen to you without judgment? Just to listen. And can you seek clarification as the other's talking, such as this? I understand that you're saying this. And don't let the person keep talking until you've lost all concept there, or you can't keep it all in your head. Pause them for every once in a while and say, do I understand you're saying this? And then stop. Eventually, you're going to get to the heart of the matter. Another way is, I'm curious, could you tell me more about that? Now, these are non-judgmental, inviting statements that you can do that create safety in communication. Now, there are endless options you could go, you could, you could go with this. And I just say, try these, and then sit down and work up some more for yourselves, for you and your partner, your spouse, your children. You know, what would, creating safety is going to be the key for you being heard, and you hearing others. Remember that. Thank you for this. Uh, welcome back to Show Things. If you like this video, would you click down here and just say like? And I'd appreciate it if you'd share.